I'm just grateful for unity and letting just a place for just uh, transformation and uh, spiritual engagement and community.
Trinity co-founder Myrtle Fillmore's healing journey began when she changed her mind. Inspired by the words of a healing practitioner, she took this affirmation to heart. Quote, I am a child of God, and therefore I do not inherit sickness. End quote. After two years of persistent health affirming meditation, prayer, and practice, Myrtle was healed. Her faith made her well. Myrtle Fillmore lived joyously and vigorously for many years. I take inspiration from this story. I too am a living expression of God. I feel my body's quickening response as I claim my inheritance of divine life. Vibrantly active in every cell of my body. Good nutrition, exercise, and rest support my healing practice. My faith is making me well. Inspired by the fifth chapter of Mark, the 34th verse says, He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. John Thomas and Roger Hilton, two of the most wonderful men I think I've ever known. The love they had for their wives, the love they shared with each other, and that light that they shined out to each and every one of us here at Unity. I'd like to hold them together in our prayers, their families. And as we go in to the silence this morning, let's take that love, that love of all of our friends and family to join me in taking another deep breath. And let's just go in.
seconds of this room. We bring that love, that love that we share with our family and friends. So if you'd like to join me now in bringing up all those things and those people in your lives that you share that light and love with. So join me now and speak for me and it's loud. John and Roger here with us today as well, and their families. I would like to hold each and every one of you right here and now, for we never know what's going on in people's lives. As you walk down the street and you see somebody with a sad face, smile and say hello, shine that light, because we never know what has just happened in the families. And I'd like to bring our prayer box as well, all the names that have been put in there. No matter what the situation is in anybody's life, it is always, always handled by God. Just ask and you shall receive, it says. You were made in the likeness of God. And that is so true. Believe in this. Have faith in this. Knowing that through the power and the presence of that indwelling Christ, it is all done. It's waiting. God is waiting for you to open and say, hey, this is what I need. This is what I desire. So let's confirm this by saying our names aloud. So through that power and the presence of that indwelling Christ Spirit, I say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. So I guess I'm on again. What song are we singing this year? What? Three? Oh, oh I'm just sorry. Song. You guys can still see it. We're going to put to breathe. This is a real song. Thank you. 
instead of me, please for me. You know what I mean? Anyway, well, good morning and welcome again to Unity Church for Eddie. And for uh, those of you joining us at home or at another time, welcome too. We're glad you're watching us. I think Lucille and Scott are watching us right now. Um, she had a little incident this morning, and so she's staying put. So hi, my family at home. Um, all right, so my message this morning is entitled Better Together. Okay. So are we better off alone? Or are we better off together? You know, herds of cattle, herds of wild horses, dogs, packs of dogs and wolves, and even early humans discovered that being together is far better than being alone. I just read research this week that they found early civilizations that they thought were warring tribes that were actually trading with one another. And there's no way this could have been here when it should have been over there. So that they were, even early on, we knew we were better off together. And if we even think about inanimate objects, say a grand concert grand piano, there are over 12,000 parts in a grand piano. And that doesn't even get to the keys or the pedals yet. And they are far better together than, you know, one little key. You know, I mean, what would we do with that, right? create that beautiful music. So we need things to be together, to work together. And I think about the very beginning of COVID-19, and I have some single introvert friends who are happy as clams to stay at home and sequester inside. But it didn't take them very long before they missed being in the community. One a little bit longer than that. <laughs> she, was, she was going good for like three months. I'm going, that's really good. But most of us need to be in community and couldn't. We need, we need this community. And that's why we're here today. And not just here, but in our family, that loving support in relationships with one another. And the tasks that are accomplished so much more quickly and more easily when we do it. I think about moving in. Scott and Jack had to move this big, huge piece of furniture from upstairs to downstairs because I was going to put it on a moving truck and sell it to somebody. And when we did that, we, I just called my neighbors, and I had four guys come over, and they all helped. And oh my God, they could have done it with the shoulder dollies, but it was so much easier together and much faster, too. You know, so that's what I think about when we work together, not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually. Even Prayer and meditation is much more powerful in the group. We know that. We can feel the energy here versus meditating on our own. And that comes from Scripture. Let's go to Matthew chapter 18, verses 19 and 20. Truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gathered in my name. I am there among you. <coughs> and Jesus was saying this as the presence That presence <coughs> is with us. Charles Fillmore, which he's co-founder, I say it every week. But he wrote this article on the story of Jesus' soul evolution. And in it, he talks about that scripture. He says that two <coughs> or three, when two or three are gathered truly in the name of Jesus Christ, whether they realize it or not, if we're saying we're with Jesus Christ, we don't even know that we're doing it, we dwell in the realm of absolute principle, where the Christ consciousness dwells. We slip into that place together, and it's powerful. It's powerful for us and others. And then what happens, he says, is that our ideas harmonize and crystallize. And that creates the Christ consciousness rebounding and joining in one another. So isn't that awesome? I think that, I think I love them. Um, so, <laughs> did you know that already? <laughs> you didn't know that? Oh, well, anyway. Um, so when we foster healthy relationships and healthy community, 
accepting each and every one we come in contact with who is different than us, maybe in their skin color, in their sexual orientation, in the way they show up in the world, what they think politically, all the differences that we have in the world. If we accept and love one another as Jesus would have if he walked in the room, that's what creates the strongest community we can create, isn't it? To feel, we say, we're all friends here. We open and accept everybody who comes in the door here, don't we? We love and we encourage that loving out in the world, wherever we go. When we all share together our sorrows, our joys, and feel the support of the community, it makes more impact on who we can be, doesn't it? Because we have that support of others and how we can shore up and be the spiritual beings that we are. You know, we're having spirit, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. And the human experience is what gets us. The spiritual part's fine, as long as we spend time in the quietude. But in our human experience, it's being in community as, as family and friends and those around us that shores up our spiritual side, doesn't it? If we create those relationships that build us up. So, you know, I've attended so many events in my life, and I'm sure all of you have. I've gone to Unity Village countless times to events and other uh, gatherings for unity and conferences and this and that, a lot. I, I didn't go back and count them all up. But it, what I've noticed is that when we bring all of our diverse beliefs together, we really unite. And there's a reason that we're called unity. You know, it's that common good that we're all looking for and that it's safe and flexible to see somebody else's viewpoints, isn't it? Safe to be flexible and see others' viewpoints. I love that about unity. Somebody can come in and say something different, I think about it, I have to think about it. And, you know, that doesn't fit for me. Okay, but I thought about it, and oh, that's really cool. Maybe I'll try that on and wear that for a while, that idea. I love this community that we can do that and share ideas. So we, you know, it's, it isn't just teamwork. It's good work. It's God work when we all are in community together. And I'm so glad you're here, Penny. I don't want to be serious. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. And our affirmation this morning I, is, um, I am better when we work together. So will you say that with me? I, I am better, better when, when we work, work together. together. I am yeah. better when, when we work together. together. I am better when we work together. I am better. I know I am. I'm way better when I'm working with other people than I am by myself because then I can see other perspectives and have another viewpoint, right? And that's the power of community and working together. One of my personal professional goals this year is to be more in balance, in being and doing. We do out here, but this beingness, I gotta have the balance, right? I have to have, Ken has helped me with this. I have to have the balance between my speaking and my listening. Yeah, balance and listening. Yeah, balance and listening. And then having that balance is also in giving and receiving. You know, I think a lot of us are very easily to give and it's much more hard for to receive, you know, especially for givers. And those who receive, you know, it's hard for them to give, but I, I tend to be on the, the giving side and, and don't even think about receiving anything. But I'm trying to be more in balance about that this year because it's about being in community, right? The other people in the community help with these things, right? You can't be in community and talk all the time. You can't be in community and be the giver all the time. You can't be, you know what I'm saying? You have to have the balance there. And some people, you know, sometimes it balances on this side, sometimes it balances on this side, and I think it's best right about the middle. I think it balanced me. I did balance me in high school. Something else you didn't know about. <laughs> so, but it's, it's, I've discovered that when 
I am with people. However I treat them, as they are, is how they show up. They rise up if we expect differently. I, you know, I, I work with kids for years, and that is totally true for children. But it is true for adults as well. If we expect the best from people, guess what? They, they give us the best. I'm so glad you're here. I, you, know, I, you know, all of that, that's just the same thing that we, you know, we do with children. But it's when we expect the best from a situation that could go downward. Have you ever been in one of those situations when you're going, oh, my. Yeah, you've never been in one of those, have you? No. Okay. No, never. <laughs> yeah, but you get, you get an energy, and you can feel the vortex in the room, and it's like, oh, no. God, you've got to be with me here. <laughs> you know, because I'm going to say something or do something or react. And when we come together in that spirit and expect the other person to rise up, they will. They will. They'll meet us halfway. They'll, they'll join together with us and help us instead of going in fear, which I think is what happens. I think we react, go to fear. Um, I think that sometimes I do. And when that happens, it's just like what Lao Tzu said. He said, when we are content to be simply ourselves, and don't compare or compete, everyone will respect us. And then that's what happens. We bring that out in others. We don't compare them to us. We're not trying to compete with them. We expect the best. And then we get respected, but we're also respecting them. It's that balance that comes forth. I think that's the best thing about authenticity being authentically who we are with people. We get to shine our light the way we are. And that's that common thread that ties us all together, isn't it? You know, I I, I, <laughs> I think about my girlfriend. She's Her daughter's a ballerina. And she thinks that everybody in the world should be ballerinas when she was a little girl. And that's not, if everybody were ballerinas, who would watch them? Who would grow food? Who would, you know, I mean, everybody's got their gifts and has to do different things, but, you know, she was intent on having everybody she knew dance, right? And, and not everybody's a dancer. Somebody's got to come watch, right? <laughs> so, I mean, I get that when we have a passion and love for something, we want to share it with others who have it, but you can't get everybody to do it because we wouldn't have all the diversity. And I, I like diversity. I like, you know, pears grapes and apples and orange. And I can just think of all the different fruits I like to eat. Somebody's got to grow those so that I can eat them and enjoy them. And I'm, you know, I've not been very successful. Every fruit tree I've ever planted, these squirrels eat more of that fruit than I ever get. Has anybody else had that experience? <laughs> but I know that they're very successful at it in places because it's in the grocery store and I eat it. So somebody is banding together to make these things work. And that's that's better together, that we reunite and that as a community, we get to build that. But the one thing I found in all these gatherings that I've gone to is that communication and organization is very helpful for people to work together. When, it, the, when people aren't talking together, <coughs> chaos ensues. You know, it, it just <coughs> happens because we're not communicating. Or if we don't have, um, Organization, you know, it's all a mess. I love how Jerry's got her chocolates for sale out in the table <coughs> over here by the library, and they are so organized. She has her sign with the prices. You can see which ones are which, and it's all organized. She could have just throw them out there in a jumble, and we could have tried to figure it out. But that <laughs> organization really helps. <coughs> you know, <laughs> you know, but that's what it, communication and organization are key to working together well. And that all gives us value, doesn't it? And, and we all have our different values and different things. And in this faith community, we each as individuals and as a collective community have ways that we support, that you are uniquely our own. You know, we have some people who usher, some people who do music, some people who sing. Thank you very much. <laughs> our wonderful meditation. You know, I'm going to say this in front of everybody. I've been in community my whole life, and I have been heard wonderful meditations, and I can lead a really good meditation. But Kathy does a superb job. 
She is exceptional in how she weaves things together, and it is a gift. And, but she does that and shares it with our community. Now, we all could come up here and leave the meditation, but, you know, it's not the same because we need to share in each other's gifts. Does that make sense? You know, Diana leads our prayer group in the morning. We have our ushers who do their part. And then we have the people who do the sound team. And, you know, everybody has their part in the community. Kay opens everybody at the door. And if, without Ken, all the things wouldn't work. And our sound system, I would, I would love to have to watch my, my microphone because I knock it with my hair and make too much noise. And he keeps me on track. So we all have our gifts, and he does so much more than that. That's not all you do. <laughs> That's what he did for me just this morning. So I am so grateful for everybody sharing their gifts in their own unique individual ways. And, you know, we all have our things that we share. And if I didn't say your name and mention something you do, know that I know what you do. And I am grateful for the, what you bring to the table. I am. I'm grateful for it. So, you know, Pablo Casals, I think I said his name it right, said we ought to think that each one of us are a leaf on a tree. And the tree is all of humanity. And we cannot live without that tree and all the other leaves. I love that when I read it. We need each other. We need each and every gift that we share. So what's your passion? What's your gift? Answer inside yourself. What is it that makes you excited and how you want to share yourself? That's your gift to the world. That's your gift. Charles Fillmore studied world religions. He attended the Parliament of World Religions in 1893 and in Chicago. And he said that they were the great thinkers of the ages. He called upon them and he says, in unity we have borrowed the best from all religions. That is the reason we're called unity. Unity is not a sect. It is not a separation of people into an exclusive group of know-it-alls. Thank you God because we don't. Unity is the truth that is taught in all religions simplified so that everyone can understand and apply it. That's fabulous. That's what he was working for. And I'm going to give a plug right here. Today after church, we're starting our class on unity and world religions after we take photos. So we're going to have our class on that and talk about how the we're a community with all the unity world religions classes, religions, all the world religions. And he said that we are better together. Charles said that. He said we are better together. That's where my talk title comes from. Because he knew that it takes community and it takes one another to be strong. Reverend um, Jim Gaither, who was a classmate of my dad, he's been a unity minister for over 45 years, and he was the head of unity metaphysics at Unity School for years, I think for over 20, until they went online. He said that unity is a scientific age spiritual path. It is, isn't it? It's a scientific age spiritual path connected to Christian, Christian and New Thought traditions, steeped in it. While unity honors and seeks to learn from science, literature, and all religions, unity provides practice that lead to spiritual illumination with fruits of healing and positive change. And that's so true. I read that, I'm going, I oh, he's smart. I knew he was smart, but that really is smart, isn't it? We have all these different pieces that come together that bring us up and raise us up that we can feel the oneness and use and practice in our daily lives when we're up and down and in between. Life has that way, you know? It's the human experience going up and down, you know? And, and when we're down, it's the spiritual stuff that holds us together. When we're up, it seems like it falls away sometimes for some folks. But I think it makes the next dip easier if we stay firm in spirit and unite with one another. So unity's teachers teaching strive to bring us together, 
as individuals to uniquely express our powerful presence in the world. And you know, it's a, it's a reminder to step into our gifts. So what is your passion? What is your gift to share in this community, in your life, in your daily life? Maybe there's something in you that you always want to do and confess you should wave something when you were little and you didn't think you were good at it. And maybe the time is to explore it. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I think that a lot of children, I work with so many kids, and what I love about unity is that we draw forth the natural gifts within children and they recognize them. But very, you know, most kids, when they're four years old, if they, three, and four, or five years old, when they are nurtured and taught to listen to their inner voice, they find their life path early on. They do, if, if it's encouraged and strengthened within the family. But if they're shoe shooting, oh, you can't hear it. But, you know, if that, if any kind of stuff happens to them, they shut it down. They shut down their spirituality. They don't trust it. They don't listen to it. And then they have to come back here as adults and try and figure it out again. So much easier if we can listen and find it. And we're here today to find what is ours to do, to gift, to share with the world. We're here in California, right? And the California Redwoods, according to Robert Woods, I did not know this, have the shallowest roots of all trees. You already knew that because you live here, right? But I did not know that. They said the shallowest roots, but they are the strongest tallest trees because they unite together. All their root systems work together and that's what makes the forest strong. Well, oh, I didn't know that. That's a wonderful, isn't it? And I've been to visit them, but nobody told me that when I was there. But that is so cool that when we stand together, we're much stronger. We're stronger as a community. We're stronger in love. We're stronger in faith. We're stronger in our growth to be able to awaken and move along. So today I'm going to ask you to be a part of this spiritual community. And if you want to, you can affirm with me each of these lines. I didn't put it up on the screen, so you really have to listen, and I'll speak slowly. I am here to grow spiritually. If you want to, if that works for you, say it. I am here to grow spiritually. I, oh wait, I'm going to give you another one. I'm not going to do it three times this time. You know me really well, Alexa. She's got it down three times, Mary Grace says. Okay, we'll do it two more times. I am here to grow spiritually. I am here to grow spiritually. Thank you, Alexis, because she just reminded me what I know. When we say an affirmation three times, it grounds with it. I taught her that, and she knows it, and she had to remind me. So sometimes we forget, and we need each other in community to remind us. So thank you, Alexis. The next one is, is I step into my highest expression more fully with travelers at my side. I, it's long. Well, let's do this to the first part. I step into my full expression. I, I step, step into, into my, my full expression more easily, more, more, more easily, easily with fellow with travelers at my side. With fellow travelers at my side. Let's do it again, please. Well. I step, step into, into my, my highest expression more fully with my with fellow travelers at my side. side. One more time. I step into my highest expression more easily with my fellow travelers at my side. And I know that's true for me. I mean, my prayer partners, the people I've been in community for years, who were licensed teachers with me years ago, people who have been youth directors with me, all the things in our lives that we, you know, we know from different things in our lives, right? Jack mom's group with when Jack was with all the people who we connected to, we become a community with, don't we? And with those connections and threads are what makes life worth living, isn't it? We feel those connections. We we feel those tugs on our heartstrings because they make us happy. We feel loved and we feel at peace. As God grows in us, right? It grows us to be a community. So 
we get to share our passions, share our gifts in this community. And if you're not serving this community because you're too busy elsewhere, that is okay. And if you are serving elsewhere, that's awesome. If you're not serving elsewhere, you have some time, think about what it is that you have that you'd like to share. It could be something little. Maybe you're an artist and you share paintings with us. Whatever it is, I don't, I'm not an artist. That would not be me. We get stick figures on the wall, sorry. But we are better together. So let's go back to our affirmation one more time and say, I am better when we work together. And let's hold that in prayer. Oh, okay, I'm going to do two more times, Alexis. I am better when we work together. I am better when we work together. Now let's just breathe that in. Mother, Father, God, we know we work to better together in the community. We shine more brightly. Our Christ light that we light that candle to remind us of shines most brightly when we are working easily and in harmony with one another. We rise up today to look for the highest and best in all, to accept our diverse community and everyone that we meet that runs across our path who's different than we are with love and open acceptance, knowing that they bring something to the table that we don't. And that is what makes us rich. We find our gifts, we share them uniquely and in love, loving and accepting one another as we express that Jesus Christ consciousness through us and can see it and seek it in others as we grow stronger in our faith in you, Spirit. Stronger that we are whole and perfect and one with all that is. And we are grateful. Amen. Amen. Namaste. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being We do. Right here. Right now. And as the ushers come forward, let us do our UCIR consciousness statement. Divine order is now manifesting in every phase of this ministry through its expanded prosperity, attendance, and by being the light of a path for others. And now let us hold our offerings and let's bless them together. Divine, Divine love, love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Abundance.
Some, uh, some, some books of the early publishing of Unity that had come out, like uh, their magazine and everything. And I was going through it, and I was looking at, I don't know, about 1995 or 96 edition. And uh, I was telling uh, Reverend Mary Grace about it. She says, oh, yeah, uh, I used to write for that. <laughs> so I opened it. Uh, and here's a picture of Reverend Mary Grace 25 years ago. Uh, yes, she's real. And let's see what other announcements do we have today. Well, certainly uh, I'd like to acknowledge all the volunteers that make this service possible. We also... Uh, are telling you that the church office is going to be open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of this week, 10 o'clock until 4. We also do a meditation here in the sanctuary at noon. And it was really nice when some uh, people that don't normally come in came in during the week this last and uh, participated in the sanctuary. If you would like prayer before or after service, don't hesitate to talk to uh, Reverend Mary Grace, Kathy, or myself. And... Uh, we also offer that prayer service circle at 9.30 on Sunday morning. It's facilitated by uh, Diana. Uh, our classes this coming week are Course of Miracles at Wednesday at 10, uh, Way of Mastery at Wednesday, Thursday at 1, and we can check the bulletin board for any of our 12-step offerings. Right after class, as Reverend Mary Grace pointed out, we do have a brand new class starting, and it is Unity and World Religions. It will be a four-week class going each Sunday in February. Uh, also, we have the sound bath coming up on the fourth Tuesday at 7 p.m. on the 28th. Uh, don't forget uh, Marjorie Kin uh, Marge Margie Kennedy's uh, work group out of Simpson. They're putting together a mission and they're raising money by hiring out uh, the ones that are going on this mission to do whatever work you might have them do. So you've got yard work or you know, stuff you would like to have hands do, uh, you can ask Mary Grace to get a telephone number. Uh, also, right after service, for those who have been asked, we're going to do some group photos for the church so we can put them on our Facebook page and our uh, uh, Facebook and our website and so forth. We're also going to offer a membership class. We haven't done so since uh, uh, before last August, and we're going to do a membership class on 229. So Two weeks from today, we'll do a membership class. 219. 219, what did I say? 249. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I would be by myself, wouldn't I? <laughs> 219, which is two weeks from today. And we look forward to seeing everyone here next Sunday. If you're not able to be us, you might want to join us online on Facebook live stream. Also, everybody has mentioned that. Uh, Jerry has her candy uh, aisle out there. And, uh, you probably need to get to it before I do, so there's nothing to be left. So, uh, she's going to have it up all week and also next week. So. Uh, support her. Anything else you want to add? Oh, and we're going to take some photos out of the church. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And let us go back for our peace song and our prayer of protection. And I'd like to welcome up Peggy. Is her mic on? Check her mic. Hello. Yep.